Hey friends, I'm Amy, a health coach here at Flip Your Leaf, and today we're going to be talking about low FODMAP protein powders. Now, there are two types of protein powders that are recommended by Monash University during your elimination phase or your low FODMAP diet, and those are whey protein isolate and brown rice powder if you're plant-based. Now, when you're looking for a whey protein, it's really important that it is this whey protein isolate, and that's because it's been filtered down enough um, that enough of the lactose has been removed from this product that it is essentially lactose free or it's at a level of lactose that is acceptable for your low FODMAP program. So if you see something it just says whey protein, I want you to leave that one there for now. You can always test your tolerance when you're sort of out of your reach challenges, but for now we want to make sure that we're using whey protein isolate or we're using brown rice protein during the elimination phase. Now there's a little bit of confusion around protein powders on the low FODMAP diet, and that's because pea protein used to be sort of under the low FODMAP umbrella. And what happened was when Monash had originally tested pea protein, it looked like it was just fine, but as they started testing different brands of pea protein powder or different protein supplements that contained pea protein, they realized that um, the numbers were so different that some of them were coming in low FODMAP, but some of them were coming in high FODMAP, and so they couldn't um, really make a recommendation that if you were just picking out um, a protein supplement that had pea protein powder in it, well, that was a tongue twister. <laughs> they couldn't make a guarantee that if you had picked um, a random product, product at your grocery store that they could say for certain that it was low FODMAP and so they have sort of retracted that statement and now the recommendation is if you're interested in using pea protein powder, as part of your um, supplementation regimen, that you leave that until you've finished your re-challenges and test your personal tolerance to whichever product you want to use as part of your long-term uh, low FODMAP diet. Now the same goes for soy protein isolate. So soy is a bit of a mixed bag in the low FODMAP diet. If you've looked in your Monash app, you might notice that some products are high FODMAP, some products are low FODMAP. Um, it can be, you know, a little bit of mixed messaging here for soy products. And so when we're looking for a soy uh, protein supplement, we're looking for, again, that soy protein isolate and that's it's been filtered down, that enough of the FODMAPs are out, that it's tolerable to most people with IBS. However, that being said, it is a little bit high for the elimination phase. And so again, Monash's recommendation is that you leave this particular protein supplement until you've completed your rechallenge phases and then test your personal tolerance. So just another note on protein powders before we go, when you're looking for a protein powder, especially when you're in the elimination phase or your low FODMAP diet, we want to make sure that we're keeping things as simple as possible. Here in my practice, we always use a food first approach. So if you're working with me, you're concerned about your protein intake, you want to make sure that you're, you know, eating a healthy and balanced diet, we're always going to approach food first. So if you're plant-based, you can actually grab, um, a list of low FODMAP proteins in my free VIP resource library. I'll make sure to link that down below. Um, but in my practice, we always take a food first approach and heads up, most people actually consume more protein than they need to keep their bodies healthy. So the average adult needs about 50 grams of protein. So that's 0.8 to one gram of protein per kilogram of body weight, usually works out to about 50 grams to keep their bodies healthy. But the average adult, at least in the Western world, consumes about 91 grams of protein per day. So that is way above and beyond what we need for our bodies to actually function. And so if you're considering adding a protein powder into your daily regimen, into your daily lifestyle in order to keep your body healthy, I would definitely recommend um, running your daily diet through a program like MyFitnessPal or reaching out to your dietitian or a health coach or nutritionist like me um, just to see how much protein you're eating and if you really do need to supplement. Now, of course, if you're like a marathon runner or you're into Ironman or, you know, you do serious weightlifting, the amount of protein that you need might change. And in that case, protein supplementation might be something that is worthwhile investigating for you or based on how your body is handling protein or what you're able to keep in your body from IBS or other, you know, things that you have going on. Your healthcare team might have recommended a protein powder or a protein supplement for you. And again, if you're in your elimination or uh, even your re-challenge phase, Monash University recommends that we stick to that whey protein isolate or brown rice protein. And then once you've completed your re-challenges, you can move on and test your tolerance to things like soy protein isolate or pea protein powder. Oh, still a mouthful. 
So that's our idea for today. If you have more questions about low FODMAP protein supplements or how to work in a food first approach to making sure your body has what it needs, definitely hop into my private Facebook group. This is a safe place for you to ask questions, hang out with other FODMAP formula community members, and basically just have a great time while you're learning more about FODMAPs. So I'm gonna drop that link below, but before you go, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You're gonna get a ton more information about IBS, the mechanics of FODMAPs, and really how to make your body feel like home. I'll see you in my next video.